Hi, this is Jason from Effective Dashboards and welcome back to another video. In this video, which is part two of my scatterplot video, I'm going to look at how we create this visualization here, which is a risk matrix which plots risks against likelihood and severity. Okay, so let's get started. So the first thing I'm going to do is show you the data model. So what we've got in this data model is for each month, we've got a list of all the threats that are currently open. Okay, and we can see here that in January we've got threat number one, and then we can see in February we've got threat number one. So each each threat has is recorded each month, and um, that's because the the likelihood and severity can change over time with the threats. So we want to be able to track the threat through its life cycle. Um, we've got the description, we've got the severity, we've got the likelihood, we've got the date it was created because we want to be able to know how old the threat is. We're going to show that in this example here. So we've got its age, we've got the value at risk, so how much is actually at risk? So what's the kind of, the, the, how much money is at risk here if this threat actually does come to fruition and does actually realise? And then we've got the cost to mitigate it, so how much money is it going to cost us to mitigate the threat and, and fix whatever it is or address the, the, the issues that is causing us a threat? So let's go and um, we'll create a scatter plot here. And the the scatter plot or scatter chart, just to remind myself what it was called, is in here. Now I've got a video that goes into a little bit more detail, just uh, how to set this up. But I'll, it's fairly straightforward, so I will cover the main aspects again here. Um, I'll leave a link below to that video. It looks at cost optimization, so slightly different a slightly different application to this. Um, so let's go, and the the detail is going to be the threat itself. So that's going to be in there. Um, in fact, actually, we're going to use the the threat description as a detail. Um, and then we are going to add in the x-axis, which is going to be the likelihood. So here's the likelihood here. And that is a really straightforward measure. It's just a sum of the, the likelihood that's, um, that's in the data model. And then the severity is going to be the y-axis. Okay, now, so there's something here we can see that our severity and likelihood is 1 to 5 in each direction. Okay, I don't know if you looked at that in the... But there's a decimal element to it, so it's not exactly 1 to 5. It's, it can be 1.4, it can be 5.4.3 or, or whatever. So the, the maximum is 5. However, what we've got here is we've got up to 60 here. Now, the reason for that is because we've got an entry in the data model for every month, it's showing the sum of all the entries for all the months. We only want the latest month. So let's go and sort that out first of all. So click on here, open up the filters, and here's the date field that we're going to use here. And in here, I'm going to use top n because we only want the top one date. And the value by is by date, and we want it by the latest date. And we can see here that that's going to give us the latest set of risk rankings, because we only want the, the latest one in here. We're going to use the other data in a second, or later on, to show uh, how it changes over time. But for this particular one, we just want the most recent um, information. So we're only going to go for the most recent date here. And that's going to automatically select the most recent date. Right, so we've got the values here, 1 to 5, 1 to 5. Um, we can see that, yeah, that's the case here. So let's go and make a couple of changes here. The first one is I really want this to be, rather than auto, I want that to start at 0, and I want it to end at 5. So that's the first thing. I'm going to do that for the x-axis as well. I'm going to start at 0, and I'm going to end at 5. Um, likelihood and likelihood rank and severity rank by description. We'll leave that for just now. We'd probably put in a better description, a better title there, but I just want to kind of crack on and show you the setup here. Um, the next thing we want is we want an overlay or an underlay at the bottom that's going to show us, let's make it slightly bigger so you can see the five. This, um, I'll just quickly show you there. We want to get this value here, this picture here that sits underneath the scatter chart. And that allows us visually to see where it sits within this risk matrix. So let's move that off to one side again. And I'm going to show you how we do that. 
So the first thing we need to do is go into, well, because we've stated that this is five increments in the x and y axis, they're going to be equal. Each one of these is going to be equal. So all we need to know is, a, is a, an image that we can add in in the plot area that is also going to be guaranteed to be five by five um, in, in, in equal proportions. So it's really straightforward. I've just gone into um, PowerPoint, but you can use any 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 visual um, creation tool here. And what I've done is I've clicked on each one of these, and this is a table. So I've added in a table. Um, nothing sort of else I've done apart from take away the, any of the headers or any of the banding or whatever. And I've just manually gone in and coloured each cell. Okay, so if you right click on each cell, you can just put in the shading there for that particular cell. So that's all I've done. So really straightforward. And then just to allow us to get the sizing right, if you click on table design, go to this one here, and then in height and width. Now, it doesn't look like you can do it, but I've put it in pixels here. So if you put in 500 PX, it'll just work out in, as, as to what it is in, um, in centimeters. So 500 is going to mean each one of these is 100. It doesn't really matter as long as it's multiples of five. Right, so we've got our, our um, our chart here and then you right click on here and we should be able to export that as uh, an image Let's just double click on here save as image okay save as picture so just save that somewhere as a picture and we should be good to go when we go back to power the bbi okay so i'm back in here and then we're going to go to this plot area and i'm going to add an image and this is one that i've been working on so i'm going to import that and we can see it doesn't quite look right just now. And that's because it's got this, um, we've got this option here, image fit. So we're going to go and it defaults to normal, but we're going to go and put it to fit. And we can see here it fits nicely into each one of these. And the other great thing is it's scalable. It kind of scales. So once you've got that locked in place, it will scale. And um, yeah, so it doesn't need to be, you don't need to keep it as a square. You can change it around if you need to. And then we're going to just make it slightly opaque or transparent because I just want that to be a, a, a sort of hint of where it is. It doesn't need so something along here. Let's make it 70. Nice room, 70. Okay, so we can see now a lot, a lot better, a lot more visual. We can see exactly that these are in the, the high area. These are kind of that's that's a high severity, but a slightly lower likelihood. So much, much better. You can see it, the risks. Or the threats overlaid on top of the actual matrix so really really um really useful and although you can't see a count which you can't you could with the other approach i'll leave the, the the videos below to so you can look at the other approach what it does allow you to do is it allows you to see a a, a threat with a bit more granularity as the way that's actually sitting within each of the quadrants so that's um that's that part there now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add in two more dimensions. So we've got the the likelihood and we've got the severity. So we can go in here and we can see that we've also got the value at risk. So I'm going to cut, uh, for, first of all, actually, before that, let's go at the age. So I'm interested in understanding how old are each of these. So how long have they been a threat for? Because if a threat's been in the system for quite a long time and we've been living it for, for quite a long time, that means two things. First of all, it may not be ranked correctly or secondly we may be living with a big risk for a long period of time which is obviously um, not a, a desirable situation to be in so what i'm going to do is i'm going to use the size to represent the age so i'll click on here and in here we can see we've got this size here and i'm going to go and get the age and i'm going to put it in there so now we can see most of these are actually roughly the same age. This one's slightly newer. Okay, so we've got an age dimension here. Now, what we could do is go in this shape and let's make it slightly smaller. Yeah, okay, because um, I think it's a bit overwhelming with the size. So this is the, the starting size. Uh, I'm quite happy with that marker there. Um, and we can see that most of these actually are roughly the same age, apart from that one, which is relatively newer. That's... 400 days, 406 days, 428 days. So we're living with quite a lot of threats for quite a long time. Um, okay, so the next thing we're going to do is also add in 
the cost to go and mitigate this threat. Okay, so if it costs a lot of money to mitigate against a threat, then it may not be worth doing straight away, or there might be other ones that are relatively cheap to mitigate against and quite a high impact and high likelihood, in which case you want to get after them first. So let's go into cost to mitigate. And we're going to use the color. And we're going to use conditional formatting. So in here, I'm going to go and color scale. And I'm going to put cost, cost to mitigate. And I'm actually going to use a scale from white through to this blue color here because that's the that's the blue color we're using. Okay, so straight away here we can see that this one is looking like it's the highest cost to mitigate, and the other ones are a, a lot cheaper, a lot a lot cheaper. So this one here is going to be ones we're going to get after quite quickly. This one less so. In fact, actually, let's go and just change that. Um, maybe we we'll, wouldn't start. Maybe we'll start with um, a slightly brighter color here, just a slightly different color. Sometimes you need to tinker with this a little bit. What's happened here? Oh, kind of description. So I'm just going to change this to cost to mitigate, just to make it slightly different. Okay, yeah, so that's a little bit better there. So we can see that this one here, clearly it's going to cost a lot of money to mitigate against this one here. The other ones are fairly fairly straightforward and fairly fairly similar um, in, in nature. Right, okay, so that is the, the, the second dimension, which is a cost to mitigate. So that's quite expensive, that's quite expensive. These ones here are less so in comparison to the, 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 the cost in, in total. So with that one being the highest and probably one of these ones being the lowest, this is this is how that gradient has actually worked. Now the other thing I would like to do is put the category on. Okay. So remember remember before I pulled in this um, description. So now we can see the description. Now this works really well with a low number of risks. If you've got 20 or 30 list risks on there, it's not going to work particularly well. But in this instance here, you can see each one of these, and it just helps you to understand exactly what it is. Loss of, su loss of support and structure integrity, ex export compressor failure, loss of power to the site. So we can see each one of these is being called out, which I really like. The next thing I'm going to do is I am going to go in and add on this border. So we've got a, the option here to add in a colored border, and I, I do think it does just help to just make them a little bit easier to spot and to, and to actually just highlight them a little bit on, on top of the grid. So that's another thing I'm going to do there. Um, we could change the title, we could change the ramp, but that's pretty much it for just now. Okay, so this is going to help us to create a risk matrix with a scatter plot that gives you a little bit of a higher level of granularity. It's great for a smaller number of risks like we've got here. And it also allows you to see the risk on the screen. So the one I've created before just gives you a count of the number of risks in each one of these. You can click on a, and use it as a filter to be able to see those in a separate field. But this is great if you're doing a presentation to maybe senior management um, on, on where the risks are. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you the, the final one in here. In fact, before I do that, the other option we've got here is this legend. Now that legend, I would switch that on because that's going to allow you to see the scale of the different costs. Okay, so we can see that this one here, which is, is the, the bluest, is 1.5 million. And we can see the, the the lower end of the scale, we've got 160,000. So these ones here, they're all going to be roughly 160,000. This one here is going to be a lot higher. Um, and then the other thing I would do there is pull in this cost to mitigate as a tooltip so that when we do hover above here you can see that cost there okay unfortunately it does not allow you to format that so you can't, you can't really see the actual the commas but um you could create another measure that would allow you to do that but just in terms of concept the concept then um, it does let gives you that extra level of um, information when you hover over these okay so let's go and we're going to add in the final one 
which is this bit here, the play axis. Right, so to play over time, what I've done here, and I'm just going to talk you through this really briefly to explain what I've done. So the first thing I've done here is I've taken off the filter on date. Okay, so we don't need the date. And then I'll minimize that. In, in this field well here, I've added in the date. So if I take off the date, it's not going to show anything. But if I put the date in here, it's going to show us where each one of these is as a starting point. It's actually the end point it's going to show us for the, that date there, because we can see the date slicers at the very end here. So if I pull it to the very start, and once that date's in, if I press play, and we keep an eye on this one here, I think it is, or this one here, we can see the, the circles are getting bigger, and this one is moving as it progresses through the year. So as things get older, the circles get bigger, and as we see the likelihood and the severity increase because circumstances are perhaps changing, then we can see that movement throughout the year and we can see, I don't know if you mentioned this, if you saw as well, but there was one here and it kind of disappears at some point as we close it off and that disappears and that one starts again. So again, it probably a little bit um, gimmicky, but it does give you a time dimension and it allows you to see how things are progressing over time should you need to understand that, that information. So a little bit novel, um, and you just add in this date. That's all you do in the, in the play axis, and just remember to remove the filter on the date, and um, and everything should be good to go from there. So I'm really kind of, I really like this. I'm, I'm, I'm happy I found out how to put this granularity in, and also to show the actual risks. It's really handy for showing like top 10 risks um, etc. And um, rather than just showing a count of the number of risks in each one of the actual blocks. And um, yeah, it's something I'll, I'll definitely use to, and I'm definitely going to continue to use. So hopefully you found it useful. And if you have, if you would, um, if you can give it a thumbs up, that would be appreciated. And if you want to keep up to date with the latest videos, then hit the subscribe button and hit the bell. And um, if you're interested in learning more about Power BI, then check out the courses below. Um, and apart from that, Thanks for listening and I'll talk to you in the next video.